supposed to give you quiz five on Monday, and it was supposed to be due today, but I forgot. So I just passed it out. They should be on your tables. Um, I won't see you again until a week from today, so that's when that quiz is going to be due. <laughs> None, no, no. None taken. <laughs> Um, so that'll be due in a week, and it actually, it says here that it's only going to cover 26 through 29, but it also covers 24 quadratic functions. Okay. So that's your quiz, due a week from today. Um, what else? There's a bunch of graded stuff in your folders, so check your folders. And that's it, I guess. Okay, let's spend like five minutes talking about these preview, discussing the preview exercises at your groups, um, and then we'll go over them. So I have a graph of a function here. Up here. Hey. Okay, I have a graph of a function here. I want to look for x values where it is undefined. So that is x values where the function has no y value x values where the function does not live. Zero. Not zero, because when x is zero, the function has a value there. Looks like negative one. Oh, no. One, x equals one. I have this asymptote thing. I have this line that my graph is approaching but never crossing. So x equals one. Anywhere else where the function has no y value? Two. two. Yeah, I've got a hole in the graph here at two comma one. Hey. Yep. Yep. So when x equals 2, there is no y value for that function, because I plucked that point out. Okay. All right, so the next one, write the equation of the vertical asymptote. And then I have to tell you what a vertical asymptote is, right? So a vertical asymptote is a vertical line that the graph of f approaches but does not touch. So that happens where? At x equals 1. That's the equation, x equals 1. All right, then we want to write an equation for the horizontal asymptote. And a horizontal asymptote is a horizontal line that the graph of f approaches at the far right and at the far left. So if you look way out, there, there might be a line that your graph approaches, um, but never touches. What is zero? Y is zero. Yeah, so this is going to be your horizontal asymptote line that the graph approaches at the far right and the far left. You don't pronounce the P, asymptote. Okay. You ready to start the demo? Okay, a rational function is just a ratio or a fraction where the top and the bottom are both polynomial functions. And we've spent three or four classes now talking about polynomial functions. Okay, so um, we can express it, uh, a rational function f of x as p of x over q of x, where p and q are both polynomials. So here's an example. x squared plus 5x plus 8 over x times x minus 4 times x plus 2. So my numerator here is written multiplied out. The denominator is written in factored form, but they're both polynomials. All right, the domain of a rational function is the set of all real numbers except any x values that make the denominator zero. And then that's why I gave you the denominator in factored form, right? Because then it's easy to find where that denominator would equal zero. So we set the denominator x times x minus 4 times x plus 2 equal to 0. And then this is going to give me the excluded values from the domain, right? I have to make sure that my de denominator is not 0. So everything but these will be my domain. So what values of x make this equal to 0? 0 and negative 2. Those are excluded. Excluded. Right? So if I was going to write this in interval notation, it's going to take a lot of intervals. <laughs> but it's not so bad. Okay, what's the smallest x value here? Negative two. negative 2. So I could start from negative infinity and go all the way to negative 2, no problems. Right? I would never get 0 in the denominator. But I can't include negative 2 because that will give me a 0. So I put a round bracket, not a square bracket. Then I union that with negative 2, 2, 0, my next biggest number. 
and then union that with 0 to 4, and then union that with 4 to infinity. Right. Right. No square brackets. Everything in there is either an excluded value or an infinity. On a quiz, no. Uh, well, no, I might. I might. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, so let's look at what happens near a value that's excluded. So we know that you can't plug in certain values into a rational function, any value that would make the denominator zero. But I'm interested in what happens near those values. Like what happens when you're really, really close to negative two or zero or four? So I'm going to look at the simplest rational function that there is, 1 over x. Okay, the simplest rational function would be 1 over x. What value is excluded from the domain of 1 over x? 0. 0, I cannot put a 0 in there because it, the denominator would then be 0. So x equals 0 is excluded. So I'm interested in what happens to my function values, what happens to 1 over x, when x gets really, really close to 0. I can't put 0 in, but what happens when I get close? So I made a little table where I can put in smaller and smaller values of x. Okay. So here's f of x. It's 1 over x. And now I'm just going to plug in these different values of x. What is 1 over 1? One? 1. What is 1 over 0.5? 2, yeah. Right? What is 1 over 0.1? 10. What is 1 over 0.01? 100. 1 over 0.001? 1,000. Yeah. So it looks like as the x values are getting really, really close to 0, right? 1, a half, a tenth, a hundredth, a thousandth, those are getting really small, really close to 0. What's happening to the y values? They blow up, right? As the x values get really, really small, 1 over a small number is actually a really big number. So as the x values approach 0 from the right, so I'm approaching 0 from the right. If you think of a number line, here's 0. I, I'm coming from the right because I went 1, a half, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001. Getting closer to 0, but I started to the right of 0. So as my x values approach 0 from the right, the values of f of x approach infinity. And shorthand for the above sentence is as x arrow 0, and that little plus means from the right. As x approaches 0 from the right, f of x approaches infinity. All right, let's do the same thing, but we'll approach from the left this time. So I'm going to start at negative 1, and then go negative a half, negative 0.1, negative 0.01. So I'm going to plug in some values in here. What's 1 over negative 1? Negative 1. 1 over negative 0.5, negative 2. If you're going to get the same thing, all just negatives. Negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000. So as the x values approach 0 from the left, the values of f of x approach negative infinity. Yep. And then I have it translated down here into mathematical symbols. If this says as x, the arrow means approaches, and then I have zero with a little negative sign, which means from the left of zero. So in this case, that means we have a vertical asymptote when x is zero. Okay? So you cannot plug zero in, and as you get really, really close to zero, the y values are either going really, really big or really, really small, so plus or minus infinity. That's what we call an asymptote. All right, so we have an asymptote at the excluded value, x equals 0. So what happens um, near, so we know what happens near x equals 0. It either goes up to infinity or down to negative infinity. Let's investigate some other characteristics of this graph. Um, does 1 over x have any x or y intercepts? No, right? To find a y intercept, what do you do? Plug 0 in for x, 1 over 0 is undefined, right? So no y-intercept. How do you find x-intercepts? Plug 0 in for y. So I wanted to solve 0 equals 1 over x. 
Any x value that can make that true? No, right? If I multiply both sides by x, I end up with 0 equals 1, which doesn't make any sense. This has no solutions, right? So there are no x-intercepts and no y-intercepts. So the answer to that one's no. And then how about the end behavior? What happens as x approaches infinity? What happens as you put numbers, bigger and bigger numbers, into the denominator? The y is going to get smaller and smaller. So this, like, let's just put in powers of 10. If I put in 10, I'd get a tenth. Put in 100, you'd get a hundredth, then a thousandth, then a millionth, right? They're getting really, really, really small. So f of x would approach 0. What if, um, what if, what about as x approaches negative infinity? They're going to approach 0 also, but they're going to be going through negatives. Yeah. So f of x is also going to approach 0. And maybe I'll put a little plus, meaning from above, and a little minus from below. So in this case, the end behavior of the function approaches a horizontal asymptote. It approaches 0 at both ends, and we call that a horizontal asymptote, the line y equals 0. So I'm going to sketch the graph of 1 over x using all the stuff we just learned about. Right? We figured out that we have an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, when x equals 0. We had the excluded value, x equals 0, and it's a vertical asymptote. So we usually draw those with a dashed line. And then we have a horizontal asymptote at the line y equals 0. <clears throat> and I know that my end behavior, as I go to the far right, it's going to approach 0. And as I go to the far left, it's going to approach zero, but through negative numbers. So maybe I'll just plot a I'll just get a couple of points, like x, y. If I plug in um, one, I get one, right? So I'd have one, one as a point on my graph. And what if I plug in negative one? What's my y value? negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1 is also a point on my graph. And then you can use your asymptotes as guidelines to draw the graph. I know that my end behavior is going to approach 0 at both ends. So this is going to have to come down like this. And this is going to have to come up towards 0. And I know that when my x values get really, really close to 0, so as I get close to the y-axis, the function either blows up or goes way down to negative infinity. So this goes like this, and this goes like this. So that's what the graph of 1 over x looks like. And um, you should add this to your mental list of parent functions that you know how to move around by using transformations. What kind of symmetry does it look like that might have? Mirror over the origin which we call odd, yep. How do we confirm it? Plug in the ne the uh, plug in a negative x, yeah. So that becomes 1 over, instead of x, negative x, which is the same thing as negative 1 over x. You guys know that, right? You can put the negative sign for a fraction in the bottom or the top or out front which is the exact opposite of the function I started with. Right? This is the exact opposite of my original function f. That means I have or origin symmetry, or it's an odd function, because f of negative x equals negative f of x. All right, one more parent function, one more new parent function. So this time we're going to look at 1 over x squared. What value is excluded from the domain of 1 over x squared? 0 again. Yep, you can't put 0 in there because the denominator would be 0. Um, let's describe the behavior of f of x near the excluded value. Let me use arrow notation. So my excluded value is 0. 
So I'm interested in what happens as x approaches 0 from the right. So when you put in really, really small numbers into the bottom of 1 over x squared, what happens to the value of 1 over x squared? To the y value. What happens to the y value? It increases. Yeah, it's going to go up towards infinity. Yeah. Because if you put in really, really small numbers, when you square a really small number, it gets even smaller, right? Like 0.1 times 0.1 is actually 0.01. So you square a small number, it gets even smaller. And 1 divided by a small number gives you a big number. Okay, so when you put in smaller and smaller numbers, your function is going to go up to infinity. All right, what about as x approaches 0 from the left? So in our last example, this was different. When you approach 0 from the left, it went down to negative infinity. What happens here? Right, it's going to go to positive infinity because when you plug negative values in here for x, like negative 0.1, that becomes negative 0.1 times negative 0.1, which is positive 0.01. So this whole thing is still going to be positive, so this is going to go to positive infinity also. So let's look at the end behavior, right? As x approaches infinity, as my x values get really big, what's going to happen to my y values? When you put a really, really big number in the bottom of a fraction, oh, it's going to get small. It's going to approach 0. I don't know why I just wrote equals. Yeah. It's going to approach 0. And it's going to approach 0 through positive numbers because this is always going to be positive. Right? And then what about as x approaches negative infinity? What do the values of f of x do? They also approach 0. Are they going to be positive or negative as you get closer and closer to zero? <laughs> positive. Yeah. Because even though we're plugging negative x's in here, again, we're squaring them, and squaring stuff always makes it positive. All right. So what's the equation of my horizontal asymptote? You're close. Yeah, so it's what it's the value that your y values are approaching, and f of x represents y, right? My y values are approaching 0, so it's y equals 0 is my asymptote. Does 1 over x squared have any x or y intercepts? No, same reasoning as last time. You can't put 0 in for x, and this will never equal 0. All right, so if I sketch a graph, my vertical asymptote happens at the excluded value. x equals 0 is my excluded value. So that's my vertical asymptote happens here. My horizontal asymptote happens when y equals 0. And then if I was going to get a couple of points, like x, y, if I put in a 1, what's 1 over 1 squared? 1, put in negative 1. What's 1 over negative 1 squared? 1. So I have 1, 1 is a point on my graph. And negative 1, 1 is also a point on my graph. And then I can use the asymptotes as guidelines to draw the rest of the picture. I know that my end behavior, as I go to the far right, my function value is going to approach 0. So I have to come down towards my asymptote like that. And then as my x values approach 0, as I get close to the y-axis, my function values blow up. And then same thing happens over here. Oh. It's, yeah, except last time, the piece on the left was in the um, third quadrant. Yeah, Kieran. You can never cross a vertical asymptote, right? You can cross a horizontal asymptote that it's a line that your graph approaches in the end behavior. 
So if you're in the middle, you might cross it. In this case, we don't, but sometimes it, sometimes you can. All right, what kind of symmetry does it look like this has? Even, even or y-axis. Yep, same thing, even or y-axis. And then to confirm it algebraically, we have to check what do you get when you plug in a negative x. So that would be 1 over negative x squared. What do you get when you square negative x? Positive x squared. And that is exactly my original function, f of x. So if f of negative x equals f of x, that means you have even symmetry or y-axis symmetry. All right, that's it. Now you're going to use your two new parent functions and do some transformations with them. All right, so what's the parent function for this guy? One, 1 over x squared. So the reason I asked you to identify the parent is that once you know the parent function, you can um, analyze this entirely using transformations. This would be a shift 2 to the right and down 4, right? So my asymptotes for 1 over x squared, right? I had a graph of 1 over x squared earlier, right here. It had asymptotes on the two axes. So I'm just going to take this whole graph and move it right 2 and down 4, and I'll have the graph I'm looking for. So instead of having a vertical asymptote at 0, right, the y-axis, I'm going to move it right to, so my vertical asymptote lands here. And then my other asymptote was the x-axis, oops, and I'm going to move it down 4, so it's going to land here. And then the whole graph looks exactly like it did for 1 over x squared, right? It's going to approach my asymptotes. And then you have the graph, and you can use the graph to answer all the questions if you want, instead of answering all the questions to build the graph. OK, I drew this graph wrong. Sorry. This is a, this is a uh, transformation of 1 over x squared, not 1 over x. So my other graph should, the other piece of my graph should look like this. There we go.